few minutes left here in this segment, and this is absolutely huge. This just came out a couple of hours ago over at the Daily Caller. Listen to this. Hillary campaign vows to destroy opposition website. Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton's campaign has sent out a fundraising email arguing that the website, website Breitbart News has, quote, no right to exist. That's the quote. No right to exist. And suggests that if elected, the website will be shut down entirely. Now, of course, we had the link up with Bannon and the Trump campaign a couple of days ago. Now Clinton, even if she wins the election, is saying that she will go on to destroy Breitbart. Now, of course, if they want to destroy Breitbart, they want to destroy the Drudge Report, they want to destroy the Daily Caller, they want to destroy Infowars.com. No right to exist. This is a quote from the email sent out by the Clinton campaign. Quote, we've had a conservative media in this country for a while. This was sent out by Christina Reynolds. I don't always like what they have to say, but I respect their role and their right to exist. Reynolds' acknowledgement that the regular conservative media has a right to exist, though, is used to contrast it with Breitbart, which apparently has no such right. So they're saying that all the conservative websites that were behind Ted Cruz that have thrown Donald Trump under a bus, they're perfectly fine. We're going to tolerate those websites. But Breitbart.com, no way. No right to exist. This is what the email goes on to say. This is chilling. Breitbart is something different. They make Fox News look like a Democratic Party pamphlet. They're a different breed altogether. Not just conservative, but radical, bigoted, anti-Muslim, anti-Semitic, conspiracy peddlers who have never been and never should be anywhere near the levers of power in this country. Again, bigoted. The guy is basically the website is basically dominated by Milo Yiannopoulos, <laughs> who is a very prominent member of the LGBT community. There's no anti-Semitism on there whatsoever. They tell the truth about migrant crime. Apparently, that's Islamophobic now. You know, CNN's Sally Cohn says that Sharia law is progressive. We've got the BBC coming out with documentaries saying that anyone who even mentions Sharia law is an Islamophobe. So their view of what is bigoted and anti-Muslim is merely questioning the belief system of Islam, which is not a race, but to them, that's racist, that's bigoted, that's anti-Muslim. And now the Clinton campaign is vowing to destroy, destroy Breitbart.com after the election, shut down their entire website. Complete contempt for free speech for the First Amendment. And remember, it's coming up here, I believe just in a few days. This is out of the BBC, US ready to hand over the internet's naming system. Well, isn't this an interesting correlation? The US has confirmed it's finally ready to cede power of the internet's naming system, ending the almost 20 year process to hand over a crucial part of the internet's governance. So they're basically handing over control of the domain name system to the United Nations, which will then be dominated by countries that don't quite have the same view on free speech as the United States, countries like China and Russia. In fact, Breitbart itself reported two months left until Obama gives dictators control of the internet. So they're about to give the UN, dominated by Russia and China, control of the internet to shut down free speech, right as Hillary Clinton's campaign says that certain conservative websites like Breitbart.com don't have the right to exist. This is absolutely chilling. Now, going back to what we, we were covering before the break, this is absolutely massive. The Hillary campaign sent out an email vowing to destroy Breitbart.com saying that, oh, we can tolerate some conservative websites, but this one doesn't have a right to exist. They're openly baring their teeth, about to sink their fangs into the First Amendment if Hillary wins this election. And just by coincidence, Barack Obama is about to hand over control of the internet to the United Nations, dominated by these countries who have crushed free speech in the past, who have silenced dissidents. Remember, for the past eight years, intermittently, we've had the Obama administration come out and signal that it could back this internet kill switch 
used by the likes of the communist Chinese government, who shut down certain parts of the internet, for example, when there's civil unrest, when there's a protest, when some particularly damaging piece of information comes out about a politician, somebody in the government. They have the power to shut down certain parts of the internet in certain areas of the country. The Obama administration and other people like Joe Lieberman have supported that on a routine basis. This is going to make it easier for them to do that. Now, concurrent to this, we've got this story out of the Daily Caller again. NPR deletes comments, says commenters are too old and male. National Public Radio is the latest online publication to eliminate public comments on its articles, defending the decision by saying few people actually comment, and those who do are typically older men. And of course, they don't count because they have white male privilege. That means we can just ostracize them and pretend they don't exist. That's their great privilege that they have. NPR says its decision to get rid of comments is mostly based on engagement. Now, if this was one example, then it would be a different thing. But we've tracked for the past three, four years, all these major websites, Time Magazine, Daily Beast, The Verge, you can go on down the list, removing comment sections from their websites entirely. Why are they doing that? Well, it's because studies have shown that when readers read an article, they don't judge its accuracy based on the content of the article. They judge it based on what the respondents are saying in the comment section. That's why the left has declared war on comment sections, because time and time again, their narrative is being completely eviscerated. So now they're saying, we'll cut off our nose to spite our face. We'll just get rid of the comment section entirely, even though that's going to cost them a ton of traffic, because that's how desperate they are to control the narrative.